Hi, Pastor Joe Persh with you. Thanks for joining me midweek for encouragement from the Scripture together. You know, it's true in the spiritual life that if you do serve Jesus, then you are on occasion going to suffer a bit for it. Those two parts of the equation never come uh, apart. They are always together. If you serve the Lord, there are times where you're going to suffer. And in our time, that may be an increasingly uh, certain reality. Now, when we think about it, Jesus also promised that this would happen. But his promise had a dimension of comfort. I've been living on a particular verse of Scripture as I've looked at things that might be coming our way. It's John 16, 33, where Jesus told his disciples, In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Be of good courage is the, another way it could be translated. He said, For I have overcome the world. The world there is the word cosmos, the organized human system. It's going to deliver tribulation. Thlipsis is the Greek word, and it meant pressure that's unrelenting that, that really affects your life. But he said, be of good courage. I have overcome this whole system. I am sovereign Lord over it. Now, there are many ways in which when we do suffer, God overcomes in the moment by doing certain things. The thing I want to focus on that he does today is sending other believers into our suffering to comfort us. You see this over and over again throughout the Old, Old Testament and the New. God does it for his people. I want to take you today to a particular passage where God did it for Paul and show how God can do it for you. As always, we do three things. Take a look at a passage, kind of pick it apart a little bit, analyze it. We draw a principle from our study that's walkable. You can take it with you the moment you hear it. And then lastly, we go into the practical for a moment. The passage I want to take you to is one that uh, came as I've been reading through the New Testament. I'm reading through it repeatedly now, over and over again, long stretches, getting the flow of what's being written or, or what's occurring. And I was recently in, in the book of Acts and sweeping through Acts 28, which is the midst of Paul's sea journey to Rome for his first trial and imprisonment before Caesar. In that passage in, in, in Acts 28, on the last leg of that sea voyage to get to Rome, this is what Acts 28.11 says about the last part of Paul's journey when the ship that he was on, and he was guarded by a Roman centurion, the ship that he was on docked in southern Italy in a town called, called Puteoli, which is near Naples. Let me read the narrative to you. Luke, who was with Paul at the time as an eyewitness, wrote, After three months we set sail in a ship that had wintered in the island, talking about the island of Malta where they had been, a ship of Alexandria with the twin gods as a figurehead. Don't you just love the eyewitness evidence Luke gives that he was really there? He even describes the prow of the ship. Putting in at Syracuse, we stayed there for three days. You can find that on the map as one of the island uh, communities near southern Italy. And from there, we made a circuit and arrived at Regium. And after one day, a south wind sprang up. And on the second day, we came to Puteoli, which is a city on the, uh, the southern coast of Italy. Listen to this. There, we found brothers and were invited to stay with them for seven days. And so, we came to Rome. And the brothers there in Rome, when they heard about us, came as far as the Forum of Appius and three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. Remember, Jesus said, take courage, I've overcome the world. The Bible here says that Paul was headed to something that was very fearful. He was suffering for serving. He was heading to an unknown trial before an emperor's throne, and he did not know if he'd be acquitted or convicted. He didn't know if he'd be set free or sent to the executioner. So you can imagine the, the weight of this was growing on his mind and heart. He was only human. And as he knew the ship was getting closer to Rome where his final trial would take place, I imagine his suffering rose. 
and his sense of loneliness rose because it was just Paul and Luke and a Roman centurion who was guarding Paul. And so, in the midst of all this, as Paul's anxiety must have been rising, God does this wonderful thing. He brings the ship on a south wind into the port of Puteoli, and there, the Bible says, we found brothers. I just love that phrase. How did Jesus Christ comfort and give Paul courage? In his suffering, he sent brothers. They surrounded him. They stayed there for seven days in Puteoli. And then they went on to Rome, and there the brothers found him. They heard he was coming. They came all the way out of the city to the Forum Forum of Appius. You can see it today if you visit Italy on what's called the Appian Way, coming in from the coast through Ostia into Rome. I've been there. They came out to see Paul a long distance. And when Paul saw them, the scripture says, he thanked God and took courage. In other words, the encouragement of brothers being with him in his suffering worked. It brought confidence and comfort. It's a beautiful story, isn't it? From there, Paul did go on to Rome. And verse 16 says, he came into Rome and was allowed to stay by himself in a rented house and with the soldier that guarded him. And then he faced his trial. So that's the passage. What's the principle you can take from it? Well, I wrote it down in this way. Whatever suffering you may face for serving God, God will usually make sure you don't face it alone. Whatever suffering you may face for serving God, God will usually make sure you don't suffer it alone. I think that's the practical outgrowth of this passage and why the Holy Spirit included these remarkable personal details of encouragement. Jesus did tell his disciples when he sent them out into the world, As the Father has sent me, so send I you, but I am with you always, even to the end of the age. How was Jesus with Paul and Luke? He sent brothers to encourage them and build up their hearts. So let me take it into the practical for you. Think back at different times in your Christian life when you've felt alone or you faced a great crisis. And I'll bet you'll find more than one moment where God brought a believer that you knew into your life at exactly the right time, or has been in my case many times, believers I didn't know, like in Paul's case, who were suddenly brought into his world at exactly the right moment of need. And you made a new believing friend, and they ministered to your heart. I'll bet you can think back now, even as I'm speaking with you, and see faces float into your memory and gratitude flow into your mind. Now, I read this story, and I need to share with you that there is a a personal connection with Paul arriving in Puteoli like he did. Because you see, when I was a teenager, I lived in that seaport town in southern Italy, Puteoli in the Latin. The name in, in Italian for that town is Pozzuoli. Puteoli, Pozzuoli. It's a town that was uh, a little bit out of the outskirts of Naples, Italy, where my family lived because my father at the time was a Navy doctor and he was stationed at the Naval Hospital there in Naples, Italy. We were an armed services family in Europe. That's where our duty was and that's where I went to high school. The high school I was on and in looked down from the hills onto the sprawling city of Puteoli, Pozzuoli. Spent many, many hours and weeks there. I looked at this text and realized that uh, I'd walked those streets, and then it came to my mind that it was in Puteoli, Pozzuoli, when I was a high school sophomore, I believe, that I met my very first born-again believer. Came from a totally secular home, totally secular atmosphere, as many of you know. No faith element in it. And I met the very first born-again believers in that place, in that American high school in Potale. And their life began to affect me. Even though I was a skeptic and a scoffer and an attacker of believers, their testimony nevertheless struck me and stayed with me during my high school years. And when I came back to the States, to California, and went onto the college campus, 
I was still a harsh opponent of Christianity. But the beauty of the lives of those believers and how they took my punishment verbally never left me. And I believe it was their witness that God used to bring conviction to my heart over years of time that finally flowered in conversion and coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. So for me, reading Paul's experience in Acts 28, when he docked in Poteoli and he found brothers, that means a lot to me. I didn't even belong to the Lord in that time, and yet he set his people as part of his wonderful plan to draw me to himself. Well, I thought you might like to know a little bit about me in this wonderful Bible story. I learned that God knew where I was, and he sent his people to accomplish his will in my life. My friend, God knows where you are right now, and he can send his people into your life to do the same. May you be deeply encouraged, and may God bring a wonderful believer into your heart and life, even today, to show how much he loves you. God bless you. We'll talk to you, Lord willing next week.